continues will save lives. We're here to automate news measurement in A&E to ensure no patient mm -hmm. issue goes unnoticed. So what is the challenge in A&E? News, which is the national early warning system, is used to measure the vital signs of patients to make sure that they don't deteriorate and they get the attention that they need. And this has been shown to have significant reductions in mortality. The issue is that news measurements are taken infrequently, so deterioration is often unnoticed and staff can be overwhelmed. So our solution is the continuous automated national early warning system. And these will be wearable devices, uh, cost effective, like a Fitbit, for example, and will automate the collection of news through this. And then we'll provide monitoring and alerting to hospital staff to make sure that they give the correct attention to the right patients. So how does this work? Well, patients will be admitted to an A&E waiting room. They'll be given a device. We'll monitor this continually and transmit data to a central system every five minutes or so. And then we'll trigger automated alerts when things are looking bad, ensuring that staff can make the response that they need to do. Over to a demo. Thanks, Aidan. Okay, I've got the live demo. This could go really, really badly. So um, we imagine that uh, somewhere in the a &E, there's going to be a, possibly a new device or an existing device that's going to show up a screen a bit like this, where the staff are going to be able to see all the devices that they're available for them to give out. Uh, at the moment, none are on. Um, but we're going to switch one on. Um, I imagine they're going to add some kind of an ID, you know, an EPR number or whatever. Uh, and then we're going to connect the device and start calculating the score. So Aiden's come in and he has got the device on. He's feeling pretty well so far. Everything is okay. The new score is zero. And um, we're going to just monitor and see how it gets on as he is in A&E. Um, and actually, as it happens, um, over time, his uh, blood pressure starts to go up. Uh, his pulse is increasing, and so is his temperature. Um, and suddenly the score is now five, uh, which means there's a separate assessment that's needed. He's now feeling really, really badly. It's seven, and it's gonna be eight any moment now. Um, and that's the thing that we're looking to avoid by, or uh, we'll actually know about this to and monitor. Let's talk about the device uh, briefly. So there's a lot of devices that can collect most of what news is today. Uh, we can collect heart rate, blood oxygen, respiration rate and temperature. Unfortunately, blood pressure and consciousness are a bit more difficult. Um, but we also know that devices are going to be waterproof, they're going to be really easy to clean uh, and disinfect, and it looks like they're going to be quite cheap from the research that we've done. Um, as I mentioned, at the moment we can't do uh, the full news, but we think we're going to alert the staff to do the full news with the news use. The, yeah, there we go. Everything is on there. So. You're going to alert the staff, which, which things would you use to make them think they need to check the level of consciousness? Yeah, I think the plan is for that device to basically, the one that's spoke about the screen, to show up. Uh, that deteriorating needs a bit of attention, maybe there's going to be some sound going off. I don't really know, we haven't fully thought through that, but that's that sort of thing, alerting. So you're going to have a modified, more constrained early warning. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Do you have a particular device in mind? I was just thinking the number of patients who go through our ED on a daily basis in a kind of 50 pounds of device. Imagine the conversation with the general manager around that. Um, so the idea would be to ultimately source a custom made one. These can be made very cheaply, especially without a screen and so on. And they would be encased in something that makes it easy to clean, and so they will be sanitized at the end of the day. And the end would be to make them reusable rather than single use, so that would hopefully keep the costs down. I think you're looking at a device that's not so attractive to, to take home with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Anybody else? Oh, so anybody else that hasn't asked a question? Nope. Just I'm sorry, I'm just trying to. Would you wear your weekly medical device? Yes, would it need to be a medical device? Uh, there's a good chance that it'll need to be a wearable device. A medical device, but also, I mean, it, it's going to need to be validated uh, as well, pilots and everything. Okay, quick answer. It's around the same sort of lines that you were bringing in less friendly neighborhoods. How are you going to prevent people stealing them? 
Sorry. And will that mean it's going to be more expensive to stop them stealing it than actually having the device in the first place? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so that would be, for example, disabling the device outside of a location so that it actually becomes useless. It might not prevent complete theft, but at least they wouldn't be stealing it for their own use. Um, another thing could be it could actually be like tied to a, a, a post or something to make it physically hard to steal. So now you're going to be chained. Can you reassure me that I won't happen to that? <laughs> um, yeah, really good question. I mean, I, I've definitely heard that from people. It's the more high tech stuff you have, the more reliant stuff become on that. Good ways of managing that in the system because we're obviously introducing new devices the whole time. Um, but yeah, there's definitely some thought that's needed for that. So, presume like in high dependency ICU, etc., you have continuous monitoring anyway. You're just trying to take advantage of cheaper technology to make that in lower acuity situations. So just we were talking earlier about, I've just mentioned about higher acuity situations. Even within that, it can drop out. I'm just repeating the question for others. So how would you prevent alarm fatigue if it gets that um, So we would have to look at the false positive rate in that sense, but the idea would be that the worst case scenario would be an extra manual check, but that would be the standard anyway. And the idea would be that high priority people are giving checks and overall fewer checks would need to be taking place. 